everybody and welcome to the vlog it's been a while since i've showed off one of my favorite snakes of course rico the black tail kribo i was certainly disappointed this year that he wasn't a daddy and even though he bred uh we didn't get any fertile eggs from him but you know hey you got to keep on going persistence is everything and i tell you what when working with reptiles and animals in particular sometimes when it takes several years to produce it's almost that much more amazing when you finally accomplish it so hey i have high hopes for next year and rico is just amazing and of course Kribos are the largest colubrid in Central and North America. I mean, just look at this beastie right here. Regardless, we do have a busy day of work. We got a lot going on. I've got a couple tours today. Got some clutches to pull. You know, the usual stuff. It's going to be an absolutely amazing day. What do you say we push our problems aside together and make today awesome? Excited to be back down in the dungeon with Kelsey. What do you have for us today? First up, I have an Enchi head albino female bred to an albino clown. And that is super cool because, again, we could get Enchi albinos that are het for clown. That'll be absolutely incredible. And then Enchi double head albino clowns and all that kind of stuff. So let's see what we have going on. And by the way, I love this female. This is like, I, I remember hatching this girl. I've loved her since she was a baby. So she is absolutely amazing. And she looks like she's got a gorgeous clutch of eggs. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a beautiful clutch of eggs. And if memory serves me correctly, this animal hasn't had the best clutches the last couple years. We've had a lot of fertility issues and have hardly hatched anything. So to get a beautiful clutch like this, oh my God, those are like perfect eggs. These are they're, gorgeous. They're unbelievable. I mean, they're small enough to where there's a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. They're not too small where the babies are going to be too small. How many eggs are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight eggs. That's amazing. Because like I said, I think two years ago she had no good eggs and last year she only had two or three good eggs so to have eight eggs wow that is absolutely incredible so we'll get these ones set up and how many clutches do we have today we have four total okay cool well i'll let kelsey get these eggs separated out and we'll be back a little bit later to pull the next clutch so one in the comment section the other day mentioned that i hadn't updated the black milks in a while these are actually black mountain milk snakes what they call gagei but of course they're not black when they're young they're actually born almost like a honduran milk snake and this one hasn't changed that much but i'm going to show you three examples of how they actually progress it's pretty amazing to be honest with you and i'm not a hundred percent sure why they progress unlike green tree pythons that are say red or yellow that are down in like the flowers and then eventually climb up into the canopy and turn green. These guys absolutely are in the mountains, so there's no doubt that that black coloration helps them absorb the sunlight, which keeps them warmer. But as babies, I'm not really sure why they're born like tricolors. Regardless, this one looks a little bit more sooty, but relatively still a tricolor. And then you could tell this next one here, you could still see it's a tricolor, but it's starting to almost look like it's going into shed or something like that. But this one just shed out. That's what they look. They start getting all this black tipping and really start getting opaque looking as they start to get more and more melanin as they get older. And then this next one, you could hardly see the triads or the bands anymore because they're completely fading out. Within the next several months, this one's going to turn jet black, just like the Mexican black king snakes. Black and glossy, absolutely incredible. But you could certainly see the progression all the way from kind of the red, yellow, and black to the kind of little bit more sooty to where it's almost all black. And again, this is only going to get more black as it gets older. And there's your update on the black milk snakes. Our first tour is here, so let's go ahead and let them in and uh, see if I can keep up the energy today because it's going to be a long day. Still on the men for feeling bad, but uh, it's going to be a good time. And my first tour is here. Thank you guys so much for coming. And you yeah. said you came all the way from? Illinois. Illinois. What part yeah. of Illinois are you guys from? I'm from the Peoria area. Okay. And she's from Chicago. And I'm in Chicago. Oh, Chicago yeah. land. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming. Absolutely. Let's try and have a great time, all right? Absolutely. All right. Yes. All right. Oh, Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Oh God, uh, by the so way, awesome. I was pretty impressed you held a snake. I held a snake. Oh I did my it. God, you did it. I didn't think you were going to do it, so you did I amazing. Was good. Yeah. You guys yeah. are absolutely wonderful. Thank you for spending time with me. You guys are always Thanks. welcome. Please stay in touch. And uh, yeah. by the way, you did, you're amazing. I really appreciate <laughs> oh, thank it. Thank you. Thank you guys. It's awesome. Thanks, Thanks for having us. It was great. Ooh, doggy. This next clutch is a ripper for sure. What do we have here? This is a pastel chocolate bred to a banana chocolate spinner. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't even know what to say about that. You guys know I've been trying to hit that super chocolate banana spinner, pinstripe, whatever the case may be. This even has pastel in it. Let's see what we have. I mean, and by the way, I remember this girl's usually a really good girl when it comes to laying eggs. So hopefully she's going to have a beautiful clutch. What do we have here? 
the unveil. Oh, wow. yes, nice. Just one little slugger there. But other than that, another beautiful clutch of nice, perfect size eggs. That is incredible, guys. Oh, my gosh. And if this year I don't hit that super chocolate spinner banana <laughs> combination, I'm going to go nuts because we already have a few really good clutches down. And this clutch looks like it's absolutely incredible. I'll help you get this off here. There we go. All right, in the egg box we go. Good job, Mama. You did amazing. How many eggs? Oh my God, that is amazing. How many One, eggs? One, two, got? three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> nine eggs again. Oh my gosh, we've been getting a lot of nine egg clutches, so that's absolutely amazing. Uh, we've got two more clutches to go. I'm going to do a couple things really quick, and I'll be back to pull the next clutch. All right, so I have a package from a Mr. Alberto Vila from Hong Kong. Uh, no idea what this is. Noah thinks that it might be a bomb. I don't think that's politically correct to say. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, the point is, I don't know what this is. And it is always a little concerning when you get a package, especially something like this. It's kind of heavy. So you don't know what's in here, you know? I don't know, I mean, I, I always always wonder, like, what if someone sent me something really horrible? But I think it's probably gonna be something pretty cool, because look at how it's packaged. I mean, it looks like it's pretty dope, whatever's in here. I'm hoping maybe a diamond ring, or oop, maybe it's a Rolex watch, or maybe it's a uh, extension tube. <laughs> all right, so uh, we actually needed this. So this wasn't a surprise at all. As a matter of fact, we ordered this, but I can't believe that it came in from Hong Kong because I thought it was coming from a local camera place. So uh, there you go. Nothing too unusual about that extension tube. So you can get a little closer with your lenses uh, in order to shoot a tighter shot. So Noah, it's okay. We're still alive. No bombs, guys. We're good. <laughs> you guys know that I've kind of become a little bit of a spider fanatic. Well, I wouldn't say I'm a fanatic, but I definitely do love them. And one of the bugs that I probably don't show nearly enough is, of course, my red knee tarantula. It's a little bit fast compared to some of the other tarantulas, but it's really a beautiful, beautiful animal. And so I've been trying to work with it a little bit more. And again, it'll kind of run around just a little bit but not too bad. Once I get it settled in, it's actually pretty good. And what an absolutely spectacular spider. I mean, wow, that thing is gorgeous. And you guys remember, I used to have a tarantula called Queen Elizabeth that I wish I still had. Long story, not a good end to that story, but nevertheless, it's cool to have one again. When I was looking for another one, I wanted one that was kind of big again, but a friend of mine actually sent me this one for free and just said, oh, I think you'll really like it. And I tell you what, it's fast becoming one of my favorite spiders. I mean, just look at that thing. It is so absolutely adorable. So I'll try to do my best to kind of update you, not only on this one, but my other favorite spiders as well, because uh, for those of you guys that like tarantulas, uh, I think you need to get updated. For those of you that don't, well, I apologize in advance. And we've actually been talking about doing an arachnid here at the Reptarium. Let me know down in the comments what you think about that. Would it be cool to have like someone come in with a whole bunch of different arachnids that they can show off at the end of the night, give a little talk about it? Would it be something you'd be interested in? Let me know what you think and uh and if you guys like it i'll go ahead and do it another incredible i mean today has been an incredible day for not only ball pythons but the combos are amazing this happens to be a sin winner what was it bred to she was bred to two males actually a pastel and she banana and a banana pewter oh wow that is a lot of really cool things of course if the banana pewter was the father we could get super sinny bananas which are kind of an all purplish snakes with all kinds of different stuff like pastel and all kinds of things regardless amazing let's see what she has i hope she has good eggs please let there be good eggs Oh yeah, well there's at least one good egg outside the clutch right there. But the way she's laying, I think she's got a beautiful clutch. You can just tell by the way she's laying. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. Nice Look big eggs. That. Got a little desiccated egg there. We'll probably just have to put a little damp towel on that one. Get these eggs off here. There it is. And you can see the difference in the size of these eggs compared to the last two clutches. I mean, these are really big eggs. And we got two, four, six, eight, nine <laughs> again. Nine eggs again, guys. That's the number for the day. We had eight, nine, and nine. So we've got one more clutch. Hopefully we'll have nine eggs in that one. And the last ball python clutch of the day is... A yellow belly bred to a pastel ivory. Okay, that's awesome. Now, of course, Course, that pastel ivory is a super yellow belly meaning that this clutch should be either all yellow bellies or all ivories which are the white snakes and of course there's pastel so half of them on average will be pastel as well let's see what we have here and those white snakes are always so popular so it's always good to produce them so let's see what we got do we have a good clutch what do we got looking good so far 
Lots of boo bags. Oh, lots of boo bags. They are, but hey, I'll take them because they still look completely fine. Nice small eggs again. So we've got a lot of eggs for the size female. And we'll see what we have here. Oh my gosh, that clutch is this wild, is. huh? Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh I mean, boy. they all look fertile, though. <laughs> even this one's fertile, even though it's predominantly not calcified. So uh, how many eggs do we end up in this clutch? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. So we had two clutches of eight and two clutches of nine today. Not bad. We'll go ahead and get these things in the incubator. Again, 56, 57 days from now, we should be able to cut these. Lots of amazing baby snakes on the way. And that's all because Kelsey worked so hard. So thank you very much. Oh, yeah, no problem. I thought out some fish that monitors absolutely love the treat of fish. So I'm going to go ahead and get Elvis out, who is very energetic right now. He seems to be very excited. There you go, bud. There you go. Oh, yeah. There he goes. He absolutely loves the fish. Look at him. He is so excited. There you go, buddy. There you go. Ah, uh, Elvis is great. And the ball training is going so well. I mean, you can see how he's just responding to the ball. I can just literally have him do circles. There you go, buddy. There you go. Oh, he's loving it. That fish is just a nice switch up from, you know, chicken or beef or rodents or anything like that. And these guys will eat a lot of fish in the wild. So it's very, very common for them to eat fish. So this is really good for them as well. And we'll go ahead and run around and feed Abasuku and Argamas and all the other monitors as well because I know they'll love it too. One last one, Elvis. Come on, bud. Get up, 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 up. There you go, buddy. There you go. Again, the thing that I love about him is as soon as he's done eating, I can always just go in. And this is something I do, again, every single time, just so he understands that he knows the difference between food and actually being handled. So every time at the end, I always just go in and pet him a little bit, just to make sure that he's habituated to it. But that went really well. Let's go ahead and do Abasuku. <laughs> we can see Abasuku knows something is up for sure, but she's doing really good with the ball training now. So I'm just gonna have her come over here. There you go, girl. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, hey, hey. Stay inside, stay inside, stay inside, stay inside. Okay. She has a tendency to want to jump out of her cage for some reason. She just gets so excited when food is there, but uh, she's doing really good. Uh, again, I don't feed her fish that often, but uh, when I do, she absolutely loves it. She's definitely making short work of it. But unlike Elvis that just kind of swallows it down like a pelican, this girl always takes a little longer. That's why I don't feed as big of food items to her as I do Elvis, but uh, what a great animal. And again, I talked about when I first got her that she was a pretty overweight. And again, I had her when she was a baby, sent her off and then for a year and a half or so a friend of mine was caring for her probably overfed her a little bit much so she's now slimmed down to a really great size i'm super happy with the way she's looking she's become much more athletic the way she should be that's right whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Oh. Yeah. back in the cage back in the cage that's one of the advantages to the ball training is that when I drop the food, I can actually just put the ball out and she'll go after the ball rather than before when I drop the food, she was wanting to come out of the cage after the food, but that's all she's gonna get right now. That's good girl, you're all set, girl. <laughs> she's a maniac, but I love her to death. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do with Argument, it's been a while since we've done a kind of running thing with him, so I'm gonna let him come out, I'm gonna run him down, kind of run him back, just get him a little exercise, a little enrichment, if you know what I mean. So let's see how it goes. Come on, buddy. As soon as he sees that blue ball, he's gonna know it's on. Come on, bud. Come on, come on, out, come on. There you go. There you go, here, come on, bud. What's up? I don't know what he's doing. He's being a little cheeky today. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Come on, bud. There you go, come on. He doesn't wanna come out. Come on. That's weird. Now he's out. I'll be honest, I don't think he likes the fish. I don't think so either. Look, he's just gonna go back in his cage. But come back in, bud. Have you ever fed him this fish before? I've never fed him the fish before. Maybe he doesn't like it. Do you wanna might. try? No, you don't like it? Okay. Uh -huh. That is weird. Okay, so uh, put this down. Argmus does not like fish. I'll go ahead and feed him another thing if he wants it. But he doesn't like it very much. It's like he'll eat it, but he's not excited about it. With rodents, he'd be running all the way down like a madman. With this thing, he, he doesn't seem to be all that interested in it. He likes the ball more than he likes the fish. All right, we'll give him one last big chunk up here. Let's go back in your cage. Come on. Back in your cage. There you go, bud. Back in your cage. There you go. Well, I tell you what, I thought I was going to be able to run him all the way down and kind of get him some exercise, but it didn't work out that way. He still ate a bunch of fish, but uh, definitely I've realized, I've just learned something. If you want arguments to get real energetic about food, 
uh, obviously not going to work with fish. Seeing as Toothless is a water monitor and Elvis absolutely loves fish, I have a feeling that Toothless is going to love it too. So let's go ahead and see if he wants to eat. You want some, bud? Yeah, you like that. Oh, yeah. He loves that fish for sure. Absolutely loves it. Here you go, buddy. Want another piece? Want another piece? There you go, buddy. I love that he's finally starting to take things off of tongs because for the longest time he wouldn't take things off of tongs. He would only eat it off the ground or in a dish. So this gives me an opportunity now that he's doing this, I can start to train him a little bit more and then we can actually start target training him and stuff like that as well. So that'll be a really good thing. Here you go, buddy. Oh my gosh, you're crushing this. Yeah, I would say Toothless loves the fish for sure. Come on, bud. <laughs> Want some more, sweetie? He's just using that neck to get the fish down, you know, just like a snake. They'll kind of put it all in that pouch of the neck, and then they'll just kind of ass it down, just like a snake would. You can see now it's cleared, so he should eat another piece. There he goes, buddy. There he go. That last piece. It's so cool to see that. So absolutely amazing. One last piece, buddy, you want? Again, he's just pushing that fish down. One last piece, you want it, buddy? Nope, I think the toothless is full, so that's it. So he definitely ate a really good meal there. So what an absolutely incredible animal. I'm so fortunate to have something as cool as him. And as he gets older, do you want some? You still looking? And as he gets older, he's only going to get more cool. And although Argmus wasn't really into fish, it's not that big of a surprise because these are a sand monitor, so they're probably not going to see nearly the amount of fish in the wild that, say, a water monitor would. So it's not that surprising. Although I did think he'd love the fish, uh, I'm going to just have to stick with meats and rodents for him to keep him happy and to keep him really energized. I tell you what, as I'm feeling better, I really maybe realize how much I love this place. Being away from it just for even a day in the hospital, day and a half in the hospital, it's like I was so missing the reptarium and the animals, and of course BHB too, but it's so good to be back again, not feeling unbelievably well, but still feeling much better every single day. I know by tomorrow, the next day, I'll be 100%. I did want to ask you guys something. Remember how I did that Q&A before where you guys submit a video question and I answer? I still want you guys to do some of that. So if you want, you can send it over to at jtomsky on Instagram. You can send your video question. I'll put it in the vlog. I'll answer it and so like that or we'll get the crew to answer whatever the case is. So make sure to do that for me. But for now, I think I'm going to go ahead, shut it down, get some rest, feel better tomorrow. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. I love you guys so much. Do me a favor, be kind to someone, and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow.